snacks. This is Loading Snacks Weekly, which is a show where we get together once a week and we talk about things that are happening in pop culture. We are Loading Snacks. I am Gage. Sin is in the building, mm-hmm. in his building. Sin's in yeah. his building. <laughs> uh, jokes, also yes, in sir. his own building. Um, shout out to Tot. I know she's in the background somewhere. Oh, she back there. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, Boo, say hey right quick. Hey, Boo. <laughs> that's what we doing. <laughs> hey, Boo. <laughs> um, hey. hey, word up. Um, so listen, th- this this week we've decided to do things a little bit differently and go live because we are having to do this with each other this way anyway. Um, and um, there's been a lot going on like the past two days. <laughs> That we really need to chop it up about. And, um, you know, waiting until a week goes by when we really had to think about it isn't going to be as fun. It's not, cu- not cutting it for this one right now. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even going to be close yeah. to being as fun. Um, so, that being said, <clears throat> gentlemen. Sir. We have talked for years. <laughs> <laughs> years. For okay. years. Okay. <laughs> About <clears throat> movies going day and date, mm-hmm. DVD, Blu-ray, theater, on demand. For years. It's been a thing. We've been talking about it. We've been saying it's coming. I'm telling Ooh. you it's coming. There's no way it's not coming. We just didn't know it was going to take a pandemic. Hey, for to get there. <laughs> so really force it, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and like... And I'm going to get into the details of why we're even starting this way. But we have seen this happen. We saw it recently with The Irishman, right? Mm-hmm. Like Netflix in the theater, basically at the same time. We saw it with Bubble like a few years ago. And we had that discussion then like, hey. Yeah. Didn't this that white- uh, Ben Affleck movie do the same on Netflix? Little I'm, I'm military joke with all the people. Sure. I think it did. But I steer clear yeah. usually. I'm lying. I like Affleck. I was going to say, don't do that to Affleck. <laughs> now, that's my, that's actually my guy unless he's being Batman. Oh. Um, come on, jokes. <laughs> come on, jokes. <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. I'm trying to stay on topic. Don't do this. <laughs> I got you. Uh-uh. <laughs> you say he'll be uh, Batflick right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's not get into that. Um, <clears throat> so... Let's just get a rundown of of what has ha- what has transpired over like the last 24 48 hours. So Universal mm-hmm. had a conversation where in which they said the success of Trolls World Tour as a video on demand title it hit 100 million dollars in 3 weeks, which is basically just shy of what the full Trolls movie did. In theaters, in its first three weeks, at 154 million. Now, listen, that's not 54 million dollars is a difference. It's a lot of money. It is okay. We're not going to try to make it seem like <laughs> that's a lot of money, isn't it? And no, that was that we're laughing at Anthony in the comments. He said yeah. Val was a, a, a Whoa, better. No. Uh, no, no, no. Ben was better than Val, oh, but ben at the was bottom of the list, for, yes, but at the yeah. bottom of the list for sure. <laughs> Nah, we're not doing this, Tony. We're not doing this. Want to say, say this for a little bit later? You <laughs> leave Val Kilmer out you of go. this. <laughs> <laughs> Val Kilmer's fault had nothing to do with him. It was it was the director. Um, so actually, it might have been Affleck's problem too. But <laughs> y'all know how I feel about him. Y'all know how yeah, I feel. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Because of that success. Universal has said straight up, we plan on doing day and date video on demand and theaters when the theaters open back up. Mm-hmm. That's how we going. Period. Now, I want to throw some things out there. Universal is a huge, huge movie production house. Oh, yes. We're talking like the entire Fast series. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Since favorite franchise. Bear in mind that what this technically would mean is 
the films that were supposed to come out this year that have been pushed back to next year mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. would come out video on demand and theater same day. Now, we had this discussion like last week, week before. Sin said, nah, man, like, that's a joint I'm going to the theater to see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I, he would, though. He would still go to the theater to see it. Yeah. But that's <laughs> partially because he probably just sniped the joint <laughs> at home anyway. But <laughs> I can't. I can't because it's so relevant to the discussion. No, it, it is, is now. It is. So here's the thing. And again, we'll get into the nitty gritty. In retaliation, and I say that because this has it become really gang. Is. Really this is. is about money right now. AMC theaters took that as a straight shot over the bow. Y'all messing with our money. And basically said, if y'all are going straight video on demand the same day as you release the theater, we will no longer release y'all movies at all in our theaters. Now, AMC is the largest theater chain in the country, period. They might be the largest in the world. We also discussed how AMC is on their heels right now, mm -hmm. downgraded to like a negative triple C credit rating and how they may not be able to open back up anyway. So, again, we're talking real money. We're mm -hmm. talking about how this affects AMC's bottom line and what a statement like that being made by Universal's head honchos means directly to the bottom line and the shareholders at AMC. Not how it affects you. <laughs> Where nope. you go and watch movies while Us. they can argue that all day if they want to. Gentlemen, before we really get into the nitty gritty, because y'all know I'm going to get into the nits Ooh, and the grit. It's what you, you do. Hear me? Where are we on this? I'm going to start with you, Sin. I, don't know, I feel like my first initial impression was this is AMC taking their ball and going home. Like, <clears throat> then, like you just said, they're already in a negative triple whatever rating, they're already looking very bad. They might not even recover from this. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I think it's everybody jumping the gun a little bit too early. Like, I think the reason why Trolls did so well is because everybody is stuck in the house. Right. Kids aren't going to school. Nobody's going anywhere right now. And it was a perfect distraction for kids right now. A nice little sing-along. We can order mm -hmm. real quick. I think that's the reason why it had so big of numbers. I think making a statement like that is a little bit premature. We need to see what what, what the country is going to be like in a couple months. Mm -hmm. If this is the way going forward, cool. But we don't know what's going to happen. Like, are we going to get back to normal? I know we all don't think it really is ever going to go back to full normal. But if we can get back in the theaters, test it out then, and see if this is going to be something that you really want to go with going forward. I right. think it's just I think it's just too early to. I get it. You're happy that you got the money. I think it's just too early to announce it. Wait till things are somewhat seemingly back to normal. Try it again with another film and see if okay. you still see if you still hit them numbers before you make that statement. I think, I okay. think that's what I feel right now. Where you at, Jokes? Uh, I'm partially on the same boat with Sin. Now, I definitely agree with the fact that everybody being at home right now definitely contribute to, hey, you know what, Trolls did. Let's put this on so the kids can watch it and they can be quiet for these couple hours right quick. Right. But at the same time, I do think it's also people think, yo, let me just pay this $20, rent this movie. I got popcorn in the cabinet. I got sodas. Mm -hmm. I got water. I got all this right here. And I right. don't got to pay another $50 on top of it. Let's do it. So right. I do think it plays a little bit both ways. But I do think it is going to be a lot of people saying that, hey, I can save a lot of money now just being able to rent these movies. Because, I mean, granted, if you get the movie for 48 hours, I know some places after you completely watch the movie, it does go away rather a little bit quicker. But until you fully watch the whole entire movie, but if they still let they you do. keep the movie for, say, 48 hours, even after you've completed watching it, and you can go back for, like, a second viewing of it, mm -hmm. I do think for a movie like, say, a Trolls thing with the kids, or say, Fast and the Furious, like, if you tell me I have this movie for 48 hours and I can watch this movie as many times inside of this 48-hour time frame, out. <laughs> what is the point? I mean, granted, when you have things like, you know, Regal's uh, Cinema Pass thing and AMC that they have where you can go to the theaters many times to see it, but why would I do that necessarily when I can just rent this for $20, have all my goodies at home that I can grab and eat and do all that and I have to shell out? Granted, going to a theater is for experience, so if you tell me now maybe 
an IMAX type of thing really truly is going to be something that you're gonna go to the theater to see a movie in. I get it because you can't you can't really fit an IMAX theater in your house, but just from a standpoint of consumers like being able to save money in the long run from a theater perspective, mm -hmm. I definitely see this going forward as being the norm. Now I do think seeing how things do start to shift to a new norm, however it may be. Things could change a little bit, but I do think Trolls has, and granted, Trolls is a good movie, but when you start seeing things like a Fast and the Furious, maybe even a Marvel type movie, if Marvel or Disney decides to maybe do one of their movies to test it out, I think that that could definitely even set another milestone. You're right. Um, so I, I I know that you mentioned something earlier, jokes about Regal joining AMC on this too, right? Yep. So on an article, it was on Deadline. So the parent company of Regal Entertainment and Universal Cineworld uh, pretty much came out and said, you know, well, hey, we support this because you guys are now going outside of that window that we all have these agreements for of uh, hitting the theater. Then after the theater, you know, coming to DVD and Blu-ray then come into like Netflix, Hulu, whatnot, ever, then, you know, like going to like the free TV station. So they pretty much have joined that same cycle. Now, they haven't said they're banning their movies out of theaters just yet. They did not say that. The only okay. thing they said was just the fact we do believe that theaters should get things first and then trickle out the same way that it's been pretty much forever with movies. So I think before they put their foot in their mouth, <laughs> they kind of want to wait and see how things actually play out with having these day and day releases and see how maybe how bad it could actually be for a theater going experience. So <clears throat> here's here's where I'm at. When you look at the numbers, <clears throat> this just makes sense mm -hmm. to an extent. For Universal, <clears throat> what I'm what I'm assuming is that there is an uptick that they can see on their end in video on demand hitting in places where they don't generally see mm -hmm. the numbers do well in the theaters in those same areas. That's the only reason why I could think you would make a statement like this that sounds so blanket. Without when you when you know everybody's stuck at home anyway. Right. Okay. But you also have to keep in mind that over the last three weeks, um, places have been systematically shutting down and slash reopening. Theaters mm. are not closed everywhere in the US. Right. They're not. They're closed where we are. They're closed in a lot of places. But there are states where everything is wide open, right? And so <clears throat> You have to wonder whether or not Universal is is looking at on demand numbers that they're seeing from cable companies we've never heard of that are in places that we don't live where typically they don't see movie theater sales do as well. You know what I mean? Even when they right. do release at the theater first and that window is a is a real thing because you're very right, Sin. Looking at it as a whole and going, look, people are stuck in the house. There's nothing else to do. Why? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You're going to yeah. why would you change your entire business model based on something like this when you don't especially around things reopening? Right. When you don't know exactly how things are going to be or how realistic this is as a real litmus test for how well it would it would it would be. Right. So. If you look at. The statement that was made by AMC in response to this, this is not the first time that U Universal has tried going this route or has considered or talked about going this route. <clears throat> this is something that they have appeared to want to do for quite some time, and I'm positive they're not the only production house that wants to do it. Right. Or has thought about doing it, which is why AMC has to jump out here now and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> because if this starts a chain effect. Right. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely going to have an effect on on theaters. And the reality of it is theaters have been through this before to an extent. Um, I sent you guys an article from 1997. 
from 1997, y'all, because everything comes full circle. So this was also a thing as Blockbuster was on its way out because the theater production houses, your Universals, your Warner Brothers, your everybody, right? They had these deals in place with mm -hmm. companies like Blockbuster and rental facilities that allowed them a certain window of opportunity in between theatrical release mm -hmm. and home release, release, HBO, Showtime, DVD, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. where they were the only places you could go to get it. Because it used to be that when a movie came out in the theater, you might wait a year or two Ooh, long before period. you see it come out and you're able to watch it at home, okay? The rental business became such a big business that they wanted to keep this window where, okay, after you run it in the theater, you give us an exclusive window where we're the only place you can come and get it. You got to come and you got to rent it if you want to see it, right? You can buy it, but it's going to cost you $300 a VHS tape because right. it's stupid. Right. Um, this isn't new. But there's, there is a middleman between us and our content. And y'all got to understand, man, middlemen are going away. Because mm -hmm. the internet just says we don't need the middleman anymore. There's True. always going to be a middleman, right? Like, technically, there is a Netflix between us and Universal, yep. right? Or Peacock between us and Universal. Mm -hmm. Or Comcast, who is also Universal, between us and Universal, right? So, again... Warner, Universal, NBC, same company. You're able to see those numbers from Comcast immediately. You know what's yep. going on with the video oh, yeah. on demand. Oh, yeah. I guarantee you, though, you are also not spending anywhere near the same amount of money in marketing. Right. In posters and popcorn buckets and mm -hmm. bags and all of them shenanigans, mm -hmm. right? And part of what it says in this is that the reasoning behind the ability for Universal and part of what they claimed when they decided not to push back their their, the, their theatrical release, right, and just release it later, which is, in fact, something that we've kind of questioned about, which might answer some of our questions, because we've been asking, like, why is this movie getting pushed back when this right. movie is not? Mm -hmm. How come they're doing this and this isn't happening? Well, if you look in that response that came from AMC, it says that part of the reason that was given to the theater chains for why this was happening was because Universal has has merchandising deals with toy companies and so forth that they came back out of. That the timing just, it is what it is. And they had to proceed with getting it out in some way so that they wouldn't lose out on those deals. Mm -hmm. So the theaters, quote unquote, allowed them to bypass the window that's supposed to exist before this can happen. So you got to figure anybody else that's done something similar has pushed back or decided to release mm -hmm. now, maybe because they're in that same kind of a bind. You know what I mean? Onward. Yeah. Well, we got these toy deals. We got these people that are working on toys. We can't put all these toys out and they don't even know nothing about the movie right. or toys might be a spoiler. Spoiler! Yeah. <laughs> Avengers. For yes. the, for the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we have to get this out. Right? We have to introduce these characters so that when kids do go to Target, when they are having birthdays stuck at home, mm -hmm. and people are trying to shop for these things on the internet, they know why they should buy these characters, why they should pay for this stuff. <clears throat> Those deals aside, the 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 money they have to have made outside of just video on demand has to be higher than that $54 million that we're seeing when we just compare ticket sales to video yeah. on demand, mm -hmm. right? Has to be. They got to be looking at way more than that. For, for a company like AMC, again, we talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were discussing whether or not we thought what happens if Netflix decides to buy a theater chain. What do they have to do that's different to get people to come to the theater? That's the position that something like this to me puts AMC in. You have to have you have to have a reason for people to come yep. to the theater. Yep. You know what I'm saying? What is that proposition? A value proposition 
is something that you have that somebody else doesn't have that brings customers to your door as opposed to going anywhere else, right? So what is it that theaters have to offer you? Is it lush, comfortable seating that's clean? Because probably not. Nope. I mean, <laughs> some of them have it. You know what I mean? Um, is it the biggest screen? Sure. You know what I mean? Is it the craziest sound system? Sure. But you don't need that if it's just you at home. No. Is it the popcorn? No. It's not the candy. It's not the snacks. The biggest value proposition that theaters have is that they're the only place you can go see it mm-hmm. when it releases. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> so if you take that away from them. There's no reason to go. Nope. There's no reason to go. It's a wrap. It's an absolute wrap. <laughs> That's where it's headed. Yeah. Feels like that's where it's headed. <clears throat> that window that they're talking about, that, that, you know, I'm sure that contractually there's there's something there. Th- right. It could even be that it's done on a movie per movie basis, right? Because some movies do manage to make it to on Quicker demand year. and to, de- you know, the Blu ray and stuff like that faster than others. You know what I mean? So I'm sure that there, you know, that maybe it's done, you know, by individual movie. But the reality of it is, it's going to happen anyway. Mm-hmm. I don't know that. I don't honestly know that. A, I'm not saying that a threat like that is empty for AMC. But Universal is such big movies. Oh, yeah. So many of them. Oh, yes. That if AMC says, well, we're just not going to show y'all stuff. Okay. I mean. <laughs> I don't know that that is a solid threat. I'm about to say enough of a threat. Only because you're cutting into your own profits. Yeah. Yeah. Deeply. Right. I mean, what? Do you, yeah. That's a. This is. I mean, we're talking about a straight up standoff. Right. So yeah. now, Universal has come back and said, "Hey, hey, 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 hey." Hey. Whoa there. Whoa. Whoa there. Simmer down. down. <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> You're That's... cool. You're cool. <laughs> You're cool. You. Um, and say, look, you know, we're not saying we're going to do this with every movie. We're just saying with the movies that make sense to do this with, mm-hmm. we'll do it. And we'll be happy to sit down with our partners at the theater chains and have a discussion. What do you think that discussion sounds or looks like? Go. Look, you coming. Get used to it. <laughs> and get out the way. <laughs> Sir, that's not how you do it, though. But yes, that, I mean, that in the language. They're going to come in. They're going to whip it out on the table. We'll be like, what you want to do? <laughs> I think. Like you said, they're too big to ignore. They'll try to do. I think the way they'll do it is pretty much, it pretty much will go that way. But I think. Maybe it'll then come. Maybe there will be some like exclusive things. Like we've talked about, maybe you get like this extra five minutes of footage or an after credit behind the scenes type thing. That's what we're going to give to you to make certain people come. Or maybe, hey, we're going to run a particular contest. You know, you have to go to the theater to see it. The end of the movie is going to have a code. You hit this code, boom, you may have a chance to win a trip to Disney World or something like that. But what is that? But is that something that falls on Universal or is that something that falls on AMC? I think that AMC would fall. need to be the ones that are yeah. saying, hey, you come see the movie here. with us yeah. because we're offering this, this, and this. It would have to be them because yeah. Universal would just be like, we don't need to offer nothing. We just offer people to go watch this in their own homes right now. Right. And you know what? Hey, we may decide to say, you know what? After you get that rental, here's 10% off the actual purchase that you can pre-order the movie for right quick. I thought Universal will come. They'll... they'll Somewhat play nice at first. Like, yeah, let's try a couple things out. But when they start seeing the numbers coming in with what they want to see, oh, it's like, all right, pull the plug. All right, hit the switch, pull the plug. Let's go. Let's it's, get a it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Put it on streaming services. We done. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I'm going to tell you that I think that part of what has AMC running scared is that it's universal and that we know that Peacock is coming. Right? And mm. that with, with all these streaming services coming in, those windows are going to continue to narrow anyway. Mm-hmm. The amount of time that they are going to allow a theater to be the sole place where you can watch their product 
oh, yeah. is going to go away, especially as they begin to continue to craft product that is for the streaming service and see right. the numbers from the streaming service. It will even eventually get to a point where it's like, why are we spending the money we're spending mm -hmm. to make movies that then we're only giving you an exclusivity window to that we only see partial profit back from because we're giving some of that profit to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? You That's it's it's not on us to be responsible for for AMC to be able to keep making money. Mm -hmm. Right. Y'all yeah. work that out with the candy companies. Buy more candy at a cheaper price and sell it at the same price so y'all get a right. higher margin. Like, that's not on us. You know what I mean? Make mm -hmm. all tickets digital. Stop printing paper. Stop buying paper stock. Y'all figure it out. You know what right. I mean? Like, that's not that's not on us. AMC doesn't have as a... They don't have a streaming service. And with these other streaming services coming, again, when we talked about Netflix... And the possibility of Netflix getting their own theater chain, buying out AMCs, you know what I mean, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Picking off AMCs that are dying as AMC says, look, we got to shut down like a thousand theaters. Mm -hmm. and, and Netflix is just like, yeah, let me get them joints. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what does Netflix <clears throat> have to get you to go to the theater because it's a Netflix theater? Well, you already have a subscription with them. So what mm -hmm. kind of offer can they give to you that says, well, because you already have a Netflix subscription, you can come watch these movies in our theater for a lower price, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to see this exclusive movie that we only ever release directly to Netflix in the theater, you can come and see it here. You can't right. see it anywhere else. You understand right. what I'm saying? Like, there's that kind of exclusivity that they're able to 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 maneuver with that might be the kind of thing that has to happen. And when we talked about whether or not there was anybody else that might be able to make a power move like that, the only other thing we came up with was Amazon, who also yep. already has their own streaming service, yep. also used to running large buildings, and also used to taking buildings that usually need people to run them and automating them and having no yep. people in the building. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But if Universal says, well, you know what? We'll take that big AMC that's down the street. Mm-hmm. We'll Ooh. take the. You understand what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. If AT and T says, "Yeah, you know what? Ooh, we have we have AT and T. Nice um, rent to it. Uh, yeah, AT and T theaters. Ooh. Universal. Theater. We already have the wireless service. We already have our own internet service. We already have. You know what I mean? We own. Mm -hmm. Whatever. What's to stop them from being like? You know what? Why don't we just go ahead and scoop that whole joint? <laughs> do it. Just do it. <laughs> just scoop? We'll just take that off your hands. That's what it is, though. Like, we're just going to come in here. Thank you. It's ours now. If you don't think that somebody's going to sit down at that negotiation table when they sit down oh, and yeah. say, you guys need to give us a window, somebody's going to say, you guys need to give us a percentage of your business. Mm. Yep. <laughs> you got, we're going to come in and swoop up. <laughs> That would be that would be gay to the meeting. I would love to see that <laughs> door open. Shit. That would be gay. They already like yeah. they having a meeting with somebody, and then the door just cracks. Like, hey, guys. my asshole, self be the one next to him. School. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I don't listen. Let me ask y'all a question: mm -hmm. How devastating would it really be if we didn't have theaters anymore? I mean. It, it, it was, it's like one of those things, you know, like, hey, I can't go see it on the big giant TV, but I can see it in my living room, so I'm still going like, to see it. I think people would get over it faster than, than, they, than they think. I think the initial shock would be like, oh, no more theaters. Then, like, after a month, you're not even going to be thinking about it because, mm -hmm. oh, I'm about to watch such and such. It just came out as soon as I get in the house. So you're not even going to be thinking about it anymore. What are you telling me? I can order me some food I want to have delivered to the house. My own food, I, you know. Can't I mean, look, up, man, up, let's keep it a theater. buck, man. Dinner in a movie is the worst first date you can ever go on. You can't you can't get to know nobody sitting down in a the theater nah, <laughs> nah, looking nah, at the screen nah, in the nah. dark. You're not nah. getting to know nobody. Nah. You might learn some things about them, but you ain't getting to nah, know. Hold on, hold on. Nah, you're gonna sit there like shh nah. Why did they just say that would be a bad idea? What happened? Brandon Day just said that would be a bad idea. What would be a bad idea? I guess shutting down, there's no more theaters. I mean, why? Why why do why do we need movie theaters? I personally think like I, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss them if they were gone. Like I've had I've had my time with them. I have all the nostalgia, have the memories, but truthfully, if they went away, like 
like this week, and I sat and watched the almost you know attraction on Netflix. I was like, you, you know yeah, what I would almost compare it to is think of like like how arcades kind of yeah have, kind, have faded having, away over time. Like one, we got consoles and stuff you can play games. I get it, being able to go into an arcade and play and do all that. It was a cool thing, but yeah. after a while, it just it just you couldn't survive. And it's kind of, and it's kind of. You know what? I wouldn't say I don't miss it at all, but I think that people who don't know the difference, it doesn't matter. I don't don't feel like there's any child who can access Fortnite on their phone right now who's going, man, I wish I could go into a room with a bunch of other people where it's real loud and put quarters in a joint. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll say, that kind of thing for us, at least in the United States, is pretty niche. I mean, I know that they still pop off in certain places. Japan got a big arcade scene, whatever, right? But like, I mean, let's keep it real. If it's not like a Dave and Buster's or something like that, like kids have no idea. You know what I mean? And the thing about that is that a Dave and Buster's is more like, and this is what I think theaters are going to end up being like. It's just like going to that section of a theme park. You go to Kings Dominion or, you know, a Six Flags or whatever it is. And there's always that section where you can play games and win tickets. And they got some arcade machines in there. And it's kind of a nice little niche thing that you do for a time. But it's not like a, a go to. You don't go there to find the newest and the latest and greatest games. No, 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 no. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Stuff you already played right. before, so, or stuff that's exclusive to arcade, like the basketball shot and stuff like that. Right. Ball, it, it, yeah. Think about it. We don't even, it used to be that. The only way you really knew about new movies coming out was watching the previews before a movie before came out. Yeah, nope. That's not Internet. a thing. Now you got YouTube Internet. and Facebook. Internet. That's, what I'm saying. that's not a thing. You know what I mean? So like that's gone. So you don't need a theater to build anticipation for the next movie you're going to see because ninety percent of the time, I've already seen the trailers when I go to the theater to see. You know what I'm saying? A, a movie. I've seen those trailers already. I mean, one of my favorite shows. On Access TV, it's nothing but trailers. All right, so James, he said his response was, the only reason the on-demand and at-home service is working as well is that simply because everybody's at home. They are thinking about long-term. I disagree. I don't think so. I disagree, yeah. I disagree. I mean, look, you might normally, you might not normally video on-demand. So if you did it while you're stuck at home because you're stuck at home, you're probably a small percentage because video on demand has been a thing for so long mm-hmm. that it has to be working or it wouldn't still be a thing. It just that's that's just that's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. There's no blockbuster. Redbox might as well forget it. You know what I mean? Netflix exists because it's got video, not because of DVDs that get shipped right. and they do still ship DVDs, but like video on demand is definitely a real thing and it's gotta be lucrative because Everybody is jumping on the bandwagon. Everybody, on. it used to everybody. be the only cable company. Everybody can streaming service. Now you can get full. I mean, whether it's Amazon or it's Vudu or through your Xbox or through PlayStation or whatever, like PlayStation Now, like you know what I mean. Like there are video on demand options everywhere, mm-hmm. everywhere, which means it has to be working in some way, shape, or form. It just does. How does that compare to a theater and going to the theater and what the theater experience is like? I guess that depends on what your home is like and what you have. But almost everybody I know got some level of surround sound. And if they don't, it's because they don't care. Right? I mean, I. Yeah, because at this yeah. point, sounds around, you can get sounds around for dirt cheap. So it's right. like. Right. Use a sound yeah. bar. Yeah. So it's just like, like, personally, me, I don't have a sound bar. I don't have anything right now. Oh, well, let me put it this way. My main room in the house has a home theater system on it. Anywhere okay. else in the house, it's just a normal TV. Right. That's it. Eventually, I was thinking about getting a sound bar to give me a little bit better quality. But a lot of the TV companies now have been getting better at putting audio in these TVs. Mm-hmm. And right. you and you get it pretty good there. Right. Like, <clears throat> I mean, look. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that theater should go away. Not at all. I am saying I think that it's going to be niche sooner than later, and that part of it is because of this. It was going to be niche at some point anyway. Like, theaters were very close, in my opinion, within the last 10 years to almost going away anyway because of the uptick in the quality of video that you could get in Blu-ray, you know what I mean? In Even in, like, regular DVD, you know, you can go back to them trying to really push crap like Superbit 
You know what That's I mean? And stuff mean. like that. Like that qu- level of quality of video going up combined with the surround sound quality has made it so that the theater is a thing. Like if you just really want to spend a lot of money to go to the theater and have an experience that's away from home and sit in the dark with strangers, you can. But it's hard to make that sound appealing, I think. So if you was on the AMC marketing team, Brandon Day, what would you do? Well, his response is where he put a one that said, do we actually have any data on demand prior to this pandemic? And then after that, he followed up with, yeah, I know that. But uh, then he followed up with, do we know any other film prior to the pandemic that has done 100 million other than Trolls 2? I mean, I guess you're talking about streaming wise. I mean, that, that's that, something yeah. the video. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty thing, sure it's streaming because I'm gonna say a lot of movies have made 100 million. Yeah, yeah. Video, yeah. But I'm that pretty one sure was just streaming. like I feel like that's just a litmus test. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they saw those numbers come back, getting excited. Like okay, we're seeing numbers here. Like I said, I just think they just jumped the gun with making that statement. Like, yeah, but it's working. Like but it's working. The thing though is, yeah. let's say for example, they do do uh, certain releases where they go both digital and they go to the theater. The mm-hmm. end of the day is they're getting the money one way or the other. I get the theaters probably wouldn't necessarily get the well, I mean, they don't really they don't get nothing off the movie tickets, they get it from the concession. So the people are not going to be in there to buy the concessions, but it's it's one of those things that I feel like at this point we just do it. Like and I mean, see I think the difference is that you're talking about <coughs> the difference in the <coughs> Right, Mm -hmm. the actual margins that you're seeing versus the total number of dollars that you make. Like I said, 154 million for the first troll film versus 100 million for the second troll film being straight video on demand under these circumstances. There's a lot of difference in dollars between 100 million and Mm -hmm. 154 million. However, how much is the difference in profit? When you didn't have to do the same kind of marketing push and you didn't have to print those materials and you didn't have to make mm-hmm. all the extra effort that you have to make to create cardboard standees to go mm-hmm. inside of a theater and ship them out and do all the other kind of stuff. There's a so so somebody who is crunching. The, these are not these are not numbers. That we're privy to. Somebody's right, right. seeing numbers that made them go, hey, you know what? Oh, like, yeah, this this is the somebody movie, was right? like, yeah. no, they yeah. were already like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, you gotta come over here. Look, look, look hey. at this right here. Look at this. Hey. You see, I need to call this call right, right now. now. So, <laughs> yo, get get, get, get right on the call right now. You gotta see this right now. Yeah, they, they, there's. He also just said he agrees with your uh, point about margin. He said that's a great point. Right. Thank you. I mean, look, if I was if I was looking at the numbers. If I made less total dollars, but I made more money, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about doing both, then somewhere in there you're going, this actually gives us possibly more money to spend on the marketing Mm -hmm. if we need to. but We don't necessarily have to. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you can, like you said, jokes, try to find a way to tailor that experience um, so that the theater does give you something that the home version right. doesn't do. But you're doing the same thing in the home, too. It always used to be that way. It's like you get in the theater, but then to entice you to buy the DVD or to buy whatever, it was always the extras that were on yep. the disc. It's always yep. behind the scenes. It's that second disc. It's the, you know, whatever. That's not even really a thing anymore. No. Right? And so as you're going away from all of that, from the plastic that you have to use to make DVD cases and the printing and the ink which is more expensive than any of the rest of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To print it. The people that you're paying to create those materials. You know what I mean? In the first mm-hmm. place. When you can kind of cut all of that out and you can see the kind of margins you're seeing when you know as well as I do, they're not sending as many people to the office. <laughs> There's a lot of people <laughs> just working from home and they're not paying. You know what I mean? Like the margins are different. And if they, somebody's looking at it going, you know what? We can really do this from home. Like we don't really... Right. We don't really have to send people, you know what I mean? Like, there's more to it. So the question is, if AMC and Regal stick to their guns and they say, we're not showing your movies. And if Universal sticks to their guns and says, that's cool. <laughs> we're going with the other man. Right? Who's mm-hmm. going to lose first? And the I'm theaters. betting it's going to be the theaters. The theaters, the theaters. The theaters. <laughs> most certainly. Right? Because... Yeah. The theaters are the ones who are losing the box office because the theaters don't spend money 
on advertising movies to get you to come to their theater versus going to somebody yeah. else's. Mm -hmm. It's it's the actual it's universal spending money going hey come to the theater to see this movie date, yeah you can go see this local movie this this Friday, Friday, yep. you know what I mean they not like hey go see this movie at AMC they don't give a shit <laughs> hey tickets on sale now <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah it's not like that's not their that's not their thing like they're not worried about like because really AMC is actually eating money from them yeah. It is called, and again, we know that movie theaters, we've discussed it plenty of times, they don't make their money on ticket sales. Nope, they make their money on concessions. So really, the theaters are relying on Universal and everybody else to do the heavy advertising to get people to come to the theater so that they can sell you popcorn. Mm -hmm. yep. Get you them metal tins. That's, for this. that's really what it comes down to, right? So then it becomes AMC saying, please be in our app so that we can send you an email saying, hey, <laughs> Come see this joint with us. You know what I mean? You can pre-order your tickets right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Let's lock in your seat, buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Y'all know as well as I do when they open theaters back up, I'm buying 10 tickets. Ain't nobody sitting near me. Nope. What? I don't know you. Bubble. Man, if you cough, Bubble. I'm getting I'm getting an usher. Excuse me. Excuse me. You sneeze. That dude cough. cough. He gotta he go. go. He gotta go. <laughs> we flashlight that. I'm going in the theaters with a flashlight and a badge. <laughs> Let me see. Hey, Let hey, me see you, you, call, you call? Get out. But I yeah, called into, into, into my arm. I called into my arm. No, no. Social distance. <laughs> you need a social distance bell. Yep, social ding, 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 ding. Six feet, please. Too close. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It'll never be. I mean, it, it will never be the same again after this. Like it would. It would. It really would. Honestly, to me, it means that theaters like AMC and Regal would have to spend more money. Right. Right now, the only real commercials you get for them are the ones that they run, aping somebody else's trailers before you watch the movie when you already sitting in that theater. Yeah. Download there. the movie app yeah. and play some virtual <laughs> games yeah. with your phone <laughs> while you sitting here. You know what hey. I mean? You're hey, right you're did right you hear already? Here. Did you know you could have got. Five cents off your popcorn if you just join our, right. you know what I mean? Join our club. And like, like, oh man, that's Could've where they got. spend their money advertising because half of that shit is like, y'all should, you should drink a really nice cold Coca Cola over ice while you sitting here. Coke pay for that. Am saying pay for that. Get out of here, man. You know what I mean? Like, they got deals that exist with companies like that, with like Coca Cola, mm -hmm. right? To offer all of their drinks and stuff like that in their theater mm -hmm. chain. They're gonna suffer when when oh, those yeah. things become an issue, and they have to push the prices up because they're gonna have to push the prices yeah. up of the tickets and or of the concessions in order to stay afloat. Oh, and that means, especially when we come out of this on an economic downturn, when people don't have the money to go to the theater, they're gonna watch it at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not paying twenty dollars for a medium popcorn. You crazy? Listen. <laughs> what? Hey, <laughs> but you head? know what? Well, no. Instead of twenty dollars popcorn, how about you buy this twenty five dollars where you get a popcorn and a drink? Right. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. There's why more. is a small drink at the theater this big, bro? <laughs> That's why I always get the small one. Yeah, but then they be like, yeah, but for twenty five cents you get the large, and the large <laughs> is like. The same height, but it's like this wide. They just be looking at you like you know you want to feel that little circle at the end of your armrest. Why don't you just go ahead? <laughs> like, that's, listen, y'all think that's not a marketing thing? Oh no, it most certainly Bruh, is. When you're sitting in the theater and your hand goes into that little empty circle at the end of the joint, you just be like, man, I should have got a drink. Mm. Ain't nothing sitting in my. That's a real thing, y'all. I'm not mm -hmm. even. I'm just telling you, that's a real thing. Oh no, that's um, got that's gotten me once or twice. It had. I sit down. I'm just like, you know what? I'm a little thirsty. I'll be right back. You a sucker. <laughs> it, it, got, it got me once or twice. Yeah. I was sucker, parched bro. though. I was parched though. Yeah, sure yeah, you yeah. You was parched. I'm like man, look at the hole in that seat. I'm parched. <laughs> <laughs> what? You? you know what, Tatiana? I'm kind of parched. I'm gonna go get me a. Taste Would you like a drink? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> hey, they just advertised Coca Cola. I'm gonna go get me an ice cold Coke. And you, and you know what? And you're right, though. Look, but I don't. I think theaters 
they're going to be the, theaters have been getting more and more like what you find in a theme park anyway. Mm-hmm. And like, let's go 4D. Why don't you sit in this joint and we go left and right and right. up and down hey. and vibrate. And feel the boom in your chair. Like it's been getting more and more like a theme park anyway. Theaters will probably get relegated to being more like something you find when you go to a theme park. And it'd be like you hear, why don't you spend an hour sitting down watching a movie because you're here? You know what I mean? That's, I mean, look at what hotels are doing to theaters. You in a hotel, hotels have been able to show you movies that have been running in theaters for years now. Now, yeah. For years. You want to watch this movie? We know it's in the theater, but since you're here with us, why don't you relax in your nice, relaxing room? Mm order up some room service mm-hmm. and just, you know what I'm saying, lay in the bed and watch this joint instead of going to the theater that's right down the street. Hotels been after their money forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's going away, bruh. Mm-hmm. It's going away. There's no two ways. Now it's just a matter of time. And yeah. I don't think there's anything that AMC can really do about it, unfortunately. because and They're already in a hole. They, I like... never really want to see a business go away. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. You you have a business that's a sound business practice or whatever, but you have to, man. Gotta the adapt. way that things evolve, yeah. If you're you gotta, not, adapting, you gotta adapt. Again, think about it. Like the only reason why AMC might be in way more trouble right now if it wasn't for the fact that they adopted what MoviePass was doing and basically forced their hand to do, mm-hmm. which was born out of Netflix anyway, right? Mm-hmm. It was AMC that was like. No movie pass. We're not gonna let people with your pass. You how do you stop somebody from using a check card? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a debit card. A logo. It's it. like you you can't do nothing about that. Right? So how do you combat it? You have to create your own. own. And that's what they did. And every other chain had to follow suit. Mm-hmm. That's the end of the AMC, pass. biggest, biggest chain. So when a disruptor shows up and and Movie Pass was a great disruptor to get people to realize that people are not not going to the movies because they don't want to go to the movies. People are not going to the movies because movies are too expensive. Right. So right. if I can think about think about this for a second. If you made a hundred million dollars watching trolls, think about what that would have translated to over three weeks for real. Because ticket sales would have been at twenty dollars a pop. Right. Like if you have twenty dollars to watch this right now, compare that to just a family of two parents and a child. That's Mm -hmm. three tickets Mm -hmm. plus popcorn, plus drinks, plus whatever. So twenty dollars to sit down and watch this right here. You talking about spending fifty to sixty dollars easy versus spending twenty. That's plus gas, plus time, plus Plus gas to get there. (laughs) Right. Plus gas, plus time, plus mm-hmm. having to be in the mall and having somebody be like, can we go to such and such? No, mm-hmm. no, no, we're not going no. to such and such. We're going all the yeah. way. No. to go to the theater and we leave it. Hey, you know what I mean? Hey, like, you hear the parent come out of his voice just then? Hey, <laughs> I spent $60 already in the movie theater. What do y'all I mean, do you want from me? Listen, dog, on average for me, a trip to the theater is usually at least five tickets. Mm-hmm. And like $13 a pop. Right. So that's no drinks, that's no popcorn, straight to no candy. Mm. We ain't eat nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When it's you know, I always got the up. one and you know who she is. You're like, can I have it? I should be like, I nah, man. About, I was thinking about that. That's why I fed you before we came here. I need that caramel popcorn. <laughs> no, that flaming hot Cheetos popcorn she begged for. That was so funny. It was like, you're not going to eat this. <laughs> Did she eat it? <laughs> She nibbled. That was it. It was so bad. I was steaming, bro. Movie's I was over. Steaming. Why is all your popcorn home and steaming? Steaming. Like you gonna eat this? <laughs> you gonna go home? Uh, you gonna watch another movie and you gonna eat this? And that bucket of popcorn was like fifteen dollars, bro. For a bucket of popcorn and Cheeto. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm-hmm. so when you when you consider that you've got full families. That normally would have gone to the theater and 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 spent and bought five tickets versus twenty dollars for one joint, and you made a hundred million versus one hundred fifty four. That means if the movie had released in theaters, you certainly would have seen a lot more money than that, mm-hmm. based on the same numbers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing that's crazy about it. 
And you can't even really, you can't get a real idea of how many kids or how many ticket sales you didn't necessarily get with that. But you can pretty much rest assured that one sale of that movie does not equate to one ticket sale. Mm -hmm. It equates to at least two. At least two. Okay, yeah. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? To to it just it don't make sense. And when you're looking at it, going, you know, we could just put this joint on Peacock, call it a day. Hey. We'll put it on the streaming service first. We give it like a month, then we'll drop it for everybody else. You know what I mean? Like you know, those conversations are conversations that are being oh, had. They yeah. just have to. Yeah. They just have to. Um. So look, man. I you know, I appreciate everybody who's watching and tuning in and and and. And and dropping information and commenting, um, because so high, no doubt, um, you know, we're gonna have more discussions like this for sure because this is definitely not the end of this. Ooh, oh no, 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 it's probably gonna get a lot worse as we get these next couple weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah, wait till Lionsgate comes out. Be you, like, know, you know that being with Diddy and dude that be staring back and forth with each other. I feel like that's mm-hmm. what they're doing right now. Right now. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, listen, we're not even talking yeah. like, I mean, there are whole companies that make the majority of their money off of on demand and, and straight to DVD releases anyway, mm-hmm. that don't really ever do joints to the yeah. theater. You know what I'm saying? Very often anymore. Um, and it's a working method for them. So I, yeah, I, I'm positive. We're going to see more of this. This is definitely not the end of this, but no, of no. course, who knows how long it will actually be before theaters reopen. That's true too. You yeah. know what I mean? In full. And that's the other issue. Again, is like, again, we talked about it. Just because they decide to open theaters here doesn't mean they're going to decide to do it in Italy or they're going to decide to do it in China or they're going to decide to do it anywhere mm-hmm. else. And a lot of these production houses rely on the worldwide release mm-hmm. and what those numbers mean and what they're like. That's a whole different ball game. Uh, yeah. um, so we're definitely, we're going to see um, because at the heart of it is the consumer. And when you start thinking about what's best for the consumer, you know, is it really worth it for you to pay that extra money to get the theater going experience for five people? Woo. You can do it at home. And y'all know yeah. as well as I do, man, it's the sheer number of people who got a little thing thing plugged into the back of their TV that's hack hacked. <laughs> huh? It's oh, coming really? in the chance. <laughs> No, I'm not looking at you. No, you see, no, when you did it, he looked at too. Like, hold on. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, nah. I'm just saying that, like, right, right. That is clearly a thing, too. Yeah, we saw the right? article. So, we saw the article mention that. Another thing they're looking at. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, be, you gotta position yourself. You just beat them to the punch, right? Because usually yeah. the quality on those isn't there. Right. You know what I mean? So, all right. Let's go ready to wrap this one up, man. We're going live with cutscenes in about a half an hour. Yep. So if y'all want to hear us talk about video games and the bananasness that was going on in video games today, 30 minutes. Nine o'clock, we're going live day. Y'all gentlemen, I get back in like 15. Yo, what's up? Yo. What did you snackers and snack guests? Did you like what you just saw? Would you like to help us grow? Here's what you can do. Shoot over to patreon.com forward slash loading snacks and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on your favorite platform of choice. Appreciate you.